Hi everybody, Mr. Johnson here, coming to you from my basement on uh, September 12, 2020. As they look outside, I can barely see the sky. just want to acknowledge the wildfires that are going on right now, the people that are fighting to protect people's homes and lives, and to acknowledge the lives that have been lost the last uh, few days with these horrible fires. This is our first lecture, video lecture of the year. It's the first time I've ever done this. I intend to get better at it over time, so I ask for your patience and forgiveness with me as I learn all of these new tech tools. I've got, it seems like, 13 different types of audio and video equipment in front of me, looking at me. I feel a little intimidated, strangely more so than if I were in front of real people. So this first lecture is coming out of our AP Chemistry 1 book. We're going to be in this book through probably November or December. And then we'll be moving into AP Chemistry 2. We won't cover all of AP Chemistry 1, and I'll be clear with you about which sections of it we will and won't cover. Certainly you're welcome to read any other sections we don't cover, but know that the sections we are covering are designed to review things from first-year chem that you were possibly exposed to and may need a little bit more help with, and to teach you some things that didn't get taught in, um, in your first-year chem class, which is, is totally fine. Uh, the AP Chem 2 book is going to be new for almost all of us. Um, and we're going to go through that one from pretty much cover to cover. So I'm going to take you now to page 26 of your book, which is on scientific notation. And with a bit of irony here, we're going to start our year talking about scientific notation. And I say it's a bit ironic because one could argue we should start with something exciting to get you fired up about chemistry. And most people don't view scientific notation as one of those things. Well. For me, there were two things I came out of chemistry really appreciating and loving. One was scientific notation, because it's so extremely useful. Um, and the other one was dimensional analysis. So um, hopefully you'll feel that way at some point this year. We're starting with scientific notation, not because I love it, uh, but it's just a real basic skill that we're going to be using all year that I want to make sure we're all comfortable with. So for those of you that haven't confronted scientific notation before, I'd just like to acknowledge that um, scientific notation is a method of representing numbers in exponential form. And it's used typically for very large or very small numbers. Um, the reason why in chemistry we use scientific notation so often is because we commonly express using numbers how many atoms or molecules there are in a macroscopically observable amount of matter. And because atoms are so small, and we'll talk about that, and have all sorts of crazy analyses for how small they are to express how many there would be, in an amount of matter you can actually see with your eyes, there's an extraordinary number of atoms or molecules in that amount of matter. So that's one reason why we use scientific notation. As well, we use constants that allow variables to be related to each other in equations, and oftentimes those constants are very small or very large to relate variables that are um, several orders of magnitude different. So um, hopefully you'll grow to love scientific notation as I do. I want to acknowledge that in a number in scientific notation, there's always two parts to that number. There's the decimal portion, and then there's the exponential portion. The decimal portion is always going to be between 1 and 10, and technically it should be less than 10, so greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. And then the exponential portion is always uh, 10 raised to some power, and that power can be positive or negative, which we'll talk about in a moment. The decimal portion can have as many decimals to it as there are significant figures in that number. And that's the second part of this lecture, is, is about significant figures. All right, so we come down here, and it reminds us that a positive exponent reflects a large number, a number greater than 10, while a negative exponent represents a small number, or technically a number that is less than 1. The magnitude of the exponent, what that number is, like 4 or negative 4, indicates the number of places the decimal bus must be moved. And if it's a positive exponent, that's telling us how many times the decimal must be moved to the right to get to the expanded notation. And if it's a negative exponent, that tells us how many places the decimal must be moved to the left to get the expanded number. What that's telling us is that positive exponents, once again, reflect large numbers. As we move decimals to the right, the number gets bigger. And negative exponents, again, represent small numbers. So we're going to scroll down here and give you a chance to convert these numbers in 1a, 1b, 2a, and 2b um, into first expanded notation from scientific notation and from expanded into scientific notation. 
So I'm going to pause for a second to give you a chance to try that on your own, and then I'll solve them with you. Take a few minutes again to try this on your own before you come back and see how I solve them. All right, here we go. I'm going to solve uh, 1a, 1b, and 2a, and 2b for you. Like all human beings, I've got strengths and weaknesses. Um, one of my significant weaknesses, which is an occupational hazard, is my penmanship. I keep working on trying to improve it, and it just doesn't seem to work. I blame that partly on my dear, otherwise wonderful, fourth grade teacher, Mr. King, who, when he was teaching us cursive and didn't notice I was left-handed, didn't instruct me to turn my paper the way that left-handed people should. So for several weeks, I had my paper turned the way everyone else did in class who were right-handed, learned to write cursive with my paper tilted that way, and had at that point the best penmanship in my life I've ever had. Well, once he realized I'd been turning it the wrong way, he was a bit old school, or he had my best interest in mind, he asked me to turn my paper the other way. I couldn't. I'd already learned the other way. Eventually, he started taping my paper to the desk to force me to have it turned the other way. And ever since then, my penmanship has been deteriorating. So bear with me in my penmanship. I'm going to get better at this um, using my stylus. But uh, again, I just want to acknowledge that about myself. So here we've got a number in scientific notation. Notice that the exponent is positive. That's telling us it's a number greater than 10 or a relatively large number. And the Three tells us how many places to the right we need to move the decimal place. So let's make sure my stylus. Oop. Sorry about that, folks. My session on the ebook timed out. Um, so again, we're going to need to move this three places to the right. And so I find where the decimal is. Right now it's between the two and the seven. And I go one, two, three. Woo! That's not very nice. Um, after I moved it two to the right, there was no more numbers left. As I move it a third time, I've got to imagine that there's a zero there that I can add. So if I move the decimal further to the right, then I have numbers left. Every more time I move it, I add a zero. So I get two, seven, five, zero. All right, the next one, notice, is a negative exponent. That means it's going to be a number less than one. And that's going to be a small number, so I need to move it to the left. I move it one. And because I need to move it a second time, same thing, I've got to imagine adding a zero there. That's not a very fancy zero. So I end up with 0 0.05143. Whenever we write decimal numbers, um, if there's a, a leading zero or a zero to the left of the decimal, please try to write that. All right, so I realized watching the video I just shot that I'd made a mistake in 2A. So I'm reshooting this. I'm going to clip it in, and hopefully that all works. All right, so we're looking at this large number, a number greater than 10. So that tells us we're going to have a positive exponent in the end, and that we're going to need to move our decimal to the left to get to a number between 1 and 10. If there isn't a decimal indicated, it's always at the end of the number. So I'm here at 7, and I'm going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left to get to between 6 and 9, giving me that 6.9 between 1 and 10. So I'm going to write everything I've got now. 6.9547. And having moved it to the left, that means my exponent needs to be positive to reflect um, a, a number that is larger than 10. Final answer, 6.9547 times 10 to the 4. Last number, decimals right here. I move it 1, 2, 3 to the right. That's a number less than 10 to begin with, and I moved my decimal to the right, so my exponent's going to be negative, so I end up with 1.68 times 10 to the negative 3. The remainder of this section, 1.2, talks about how you can do calculations with number in scientific notation without using your calculator. How if you add and subtract these numbers or multiply and divide them, there's rules for doing so. We're not going to need to worry about that because we can always use our calculator in here, both during class time and on the AP exam. So I'm going to skip that section. But I do want to go to the next page where there's a problem that we'll solve together, which your book suggests to do without a calculator. That's not the case for us. We are going to use our calculator. And in fact, if it ever, excuse me, if at any point in the book it says do this without a calculator, no, we can use our calculator. So we're going to use practice problem five as an opportunity to solve this problem using our calculator, and most importantly, to make sure that you know how to enter numbers in scientific notation properly into your calculator. So I'm going to transition now to my doc cam, and here we go. All right, so here I am with um, 
a TI, and then um, my phone. Uh, I know there's other calculators out there, and I'll talk with you about if you have one of those, what this button might look like, but these seem to be the most common calculators that students use. Again, we're looking at practice problem 5 on page 19 and using our calculators, which is okay to, to solve this problem. Um, and again, the most important thing about this is entering these numbers in scientific notation properly on your calculator. So I'll start with the TI. And the first thing I do is acknowledge that I've got some parentheses around the first part of this problem. So I'm going to put that in parentheses first. Um, and then I'm going to enter 4.5 times 10 to the 12 in my calculator. When a number is in scientific notation, you don't need to put it in parentheses. The point of using the button properly is it does the order of operation correctly, meaning it multiplies the decimal portion by the exponent before it does the other mathematical operation. So I'm going to go 4.5, and then I do not hit the times button. I do not hit the times button. That will often mess you up. Rather, I find my scientific notation button. And on, uh-oh, my sister's calling me. Abort. Um, on this calculator, the TI, it's this EE button. So I have to go to second, comma, which is EE. And that E to the calculator means times 10 to the. And at this point, all I have to do is put in the exponent, 12. On my phone, it's 4.5. And then there's an EE button. And then I enter 12. So I go over to my TI, and then I divide by the second number, divided by 1.5. Again, I don't hit times, times 10 to the, or end parentheses. I can hit equals at this point, or I can just keep going, because it'll divide these numbers before it multiplies. Then I go times, go away, sister, I love you, times 2.5 EE, which is times 10 to the negative 6. And there we go, and my answer is 750. If that were a really big number, I'd be inclined to express it in scientific notation, but because it's not, I'm just going to write 750. And then if you have a different calculator, like this Texas Instrument, um, it's also going to be an EE button. You're going to hit second, and then it's above the X to the minus 1 button. See that EE up there? So that's the Texas Instrument. You've got a Casio, like I have a class set of in my room. Oh, how I miss you, classroom. You've got the EXP button, which means times 10 to the, so you just hit that button straight up. And then you've got a different Casio, a newer one. Instead of EXP, it's just times 10 to the X. Those all do the same thing. Please make sure you've found your scientific notation button on your calculator. All right, that's it for section 1-2 and for scientific notation. I'll see you shortly for... Section 1.3, information about accuracy, precision, measurements, significant figures, and all sorts of other very riveting things.